Good afternoon. Fun facts. So it's August. This is our normal time where I usually call. I did call a little bit earlier this year, um, and I may have called earlier, but I kept in contact and things weren't budging. So last year we paid $3.29 a gallon, okay? The year before that was like two something a gallon, and the couple years before that was like a dollar, dollar sixty, dollar, I don't know, it was dollar something per gallon for kerosene. So let's just go last year, three twenty nine a gallon for kerosene. This year, it's six dollars and sixty nine cents a gallon. They're figuring with our tank size, okay? Now the most we've ever paid was like six something for like, I think it's 265 gallon tank, whatever. That's how much we took last year is 265 gallons. So it's probably a bigger tank than that. She, this isn't the bill, but to get a roundabout from the years previous and we only get one fill per year, $1,700. We're gonna be probably heating with a lot more wood this year and not be so lazy. The reason I have, we have the kerosene in is because if we get ill and aren't able to run the wood stove, if we're not home, um, times where we need more sleep and we don't wanna get up in the middle of the night to tend to the wood stove, which if you do a good fire, you shouldn't need to get up in the middle of the night. Um, you know, there's the Northwest and then there's always the woods going across with your big chunk wood. A lot of people use, um, I actually have one, a smaller version as a candle holder right here, but um, you know, big pieces of wood like that, but like in a bigger version, big chunk of wood. So, yeah, people, yeah. Get your propane, kerosene, oil, whatever. See, we have oil, but because in the Adirondacks it gets so cold, we get a kerosene mix. So, yeah, can't have straight oil up here. What they're trying to do is, I mean, this is, this is, this is like over a thousand dollars more it's going to be a thousand dollars more than what we normally pay. So like four something, five something, seven something. Now it's 1,700 for our kerosene. And they're coming next week because I want to be able to prepare. And that's one, one check. Okay. Check <laughs> one check off the list of to do's before winter. It's gonna be a long winter. I'm gonna show you something else. Okay. We might have to go down. It rained and the sun's just coming back out. Do y'all see that red? Do you see that red right there? You see that? That is our burning bush. Burning bush turns red in the fall. See this down here? Yeah. And there's something going on again with the trees too. So I had to cut a branch there and I had to cut a branch there, but this is, this is fall foliage. Another thing we have is the berries. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me find some place where I can point. See the berries? Those are already coming. And it's August. We don't need no farmer's almanac to know to look for certain things happening to get the animals. See, God takes care of his animals and God knows what to do in Mother Nature to prepare his creatures for winter. However, most humans 
are used to going to the Farmer's Almanac, the weather apps, the, the go-tos that we all go to. So, you know, whether it is that you have certain heritage or something like, you know, Indian heritage that your grandparents or great-grandparents passed down to you, um, certain bugs being out at certain times, not seeing certain bugs, um, watching the deer with their fur and what that looks like can help you prepare for hard winters, hot summers. Yeah, animals struggle too, don't get me wrong, but God prepares his land for the animals that live on it. Okay, so that being said, make sure you get your fuel and your wood. We have about four and a half, almost five cords left still um, because we had delivery. I don't think we're going to get another one because we're going to be cleaning out and we'll get one in the spring or the fall. But we're good for like four or five years here with wood, like at least four and we would be good. But that's with... That's with the backup of the kerosene. See, now, if we don't have the backup, I wouldn't cut that wood in half, but I would bring that four and a half down to, like, maybe three cords. You know what I mean? So, but we, we do have more than three cords. We have, like, four and a half, five now. And now we're not burning the pine out in the wood stove in the house. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's what we're dealing with. Get your houses in order. Um, today, I'm overwhelmed with mess. So, I have mess everywhere. Um, of course, glasses and brush. I was, I mean, I think I'm good. I don't need that. But there's a lot of places in this house that need cleaned out and it needs tossed or make room. I have to organize, and I keep saying I, but this house is a we thing. Get your family involved. Someone needs to put down the hammer, right? So I would give away these fish tanks if I could, but nobody, I, I've actually tried selling and asking the people who want them. No one's interested in that, so they're stuck here. They're stuck here. Um, until everything, so we're not buying anything more. We're not buying any more fish or anything like that. I mean, I can't tell you we wouldn't take one in. <laughs> I went shopping today, so in the background, you're going to see, like, all kinds of stuff to go to different rooms where they need to go. Um, yeah, so I have a basement that I have to organize and get ready for winter. And I'm using my rainy days. The sun's out now, so I'm going to have to go out and do some cucumbers. I also have to top off fish tanks. Speaking of fish tanks. The mess in your house of things just being undone. And yes, we have lots of blankets because we have a dog. So I lay blankets down on the furniture. I don't know what that is. Is that a light? I guess that's a light from my camera. There's like something white on my neck that kept catching my eye. Well, anyways, squirrel. My mind is in a hundred thousand different places right now, including my dog looking at something attentively outside. Um, there's a lot to prepare for, which can get our minds overwhelmed. Take one project at a time. Um, Start planning a grow room in your house in a window. You don't need fancy lights. That's nice. Trust me, that works because if you, a lot of things won't come to fruit if you don't have that certain lighting. Um, the green, the blue, um, the white, you know, the red. So if you don't have those, you can go get a plant light for a fish tank. We do, and we grow just fine but there's always a good old fashioned window. Um, find a spot in your home 
and designate it to do herbs or some kind of edible plants that helps you. Um, I had gone out last year and got, I stuck them down here. <laughs> I have this little bench down here um, that I had stuck things. So there's these little baskets you can get. And each one of these baskets, these are your little grow papers. This is for microgreens. Micro meaning small. <laughs> this still though, see there's these little trays with this and it's for water. So you put your water in here. You can do soil too, but I do water. And you can plant your microgreens. You may not think something small like microgreens can help you, but that's full of uh, vitamin K. Did y'all know that you need vitamin K to help you absorb vitamin D? Yeah, yeah. So that's a thing. <laughs> but it also is full of antioxidants and vitamin A and C and so microgreens, simple microgreens. Microgreens usually are like your bean sprouts and your spinach and your radish and they don't grow the radish and the bean and the beet but what they do is you eat the head of that little microgreen pushing up. Yeah. Um, getting your honey, getting your medical stuff that you're gonna be needing, your fever reducers. This isn't really a prepping video, but I guess it turned into one, didn't it? I just wanted to talk about kerosene and propane. I'm selling propane and propane accessories apparently. Um, we don't use propane here, but um, <laughs> it's still all the same thing. It's gas. So this air return right here, my husband Bigfoot and my stepdad and I did this. And this was my stepdad's idea. The wood stove. He, I have things on here that aren't supposed to be because it's summer. Um, this here, the heat from it gets sucked in through there, down through the basement, the dungeon, and gets spread through the rest of the house. But if we don't have power, it doesn't do that, which is why also we have one of these handy dandy. It, it may look little, but it helps. So this, this runs by the heat of your wood stove. So when the wood stove gets up to a certain temperature, this starts going. Um, and that blows the heat through your home. It's gonna be a cold one, but with all of y'all, it'll be warm, right? So warm hearts, it won't be so cold. You know, bake something and it'll be good. It'll be good. So don't stress. I'm just trying to get a fire under your butt while I'm getting a fire under my own, okay? Because there is a couple of things that I ran out of. Um, and no, it's not the Karma Mochiato, but yes, that was one of them. There was things I got low on, like uh, freezer bags. I went from all last year and all through spring, all through summer, a whole year, but that lets you know I only had a year's worth of sandwich bags, but we also have family dinners. So a lot of those sandwich bags were going home with other people and you know, so there's that. So I was, but my mom, my mom and my, my sister-in-law, when they come, they also bring bags. So it's like a group effort to keep those going because it's it's nice to put leftovers in freezer bags too because like you can just decide okay I'm not gonna eat this so let's freeze it or when it's done you just throw out the bag you don't have to worry about water and whatever and washing out containers and cupboards full of containers which we also have um something exciting I'm doing today <laughs> right here we have bread dough that is um, frozen, but it's not frozen anymore. So now it's gonna start rising and I'm gonna make fried bread dough later. 
Um, I like cinnamon and sugar, and I like, um, and or, I use confectionery sugar. So some fried dough at bread dough might be nice. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be going to the fair this year. We may save our money um, and not go, although it's really hard because that fair food is really, really good. <laughs> and it's fun for the kids to go. But I had a busy morning. I got up this morning, had an appointment. Then I went to the administration's office to drop off our daughter's homeschooling uh, curriculum that we're using this year. And then I went to the Wally World to get Caramel Mochiato. I went to Hannaford and I went and got myself a Met Cafe at the Mickey Donald's because I was ready to like pass out and come undone and I just needed some coffee while I was out. So that's my downfall today. <laughs> so I didn't even get, I left, sat, that all started. I got up this morning at six something after not sleeping very well. And then I left here about just before 10 and I did not get home until like, I don't know, like one o'clock, something like that. So yeah, but um, this whole shelf here needs reworked. <laughs> this is a summery mess. All these bins were all so organized. You see what I mean? I was so organized until I wasn't. Yeah, so organized until I wasn't. Everything is everywhere. Yep, so I have fish tanks to fill. Um, bottles of water has gone up again. And... If we see a repeat of last year, it's gonna continue to go up. So get get your water, your cases of water, or I have some to go downstairs. Um, get your jugs of water, get those. Um, get your coffee. I'm, our coffee supply stopped. So I'm back to getting it at the store. And it's expensive, it's expensive. I think this container that's two pounds, 8.3 ounces, was like 11 or 12 something. That's expensive. And then putting things back for your water to give it some kind of something sweet um, is also a good idea. So I would suggest putting that in a plastic bag and then putting it in your storage. Don't keep it like that because if you get any kind of wetness or moisture, containers like this are gonna get ruined. So put it in something else, even if it's one of those, um, I think I have one up here. This is another thing I have to do. This cupboard, this cupboard right here is a mess. It's a mess. This isn't even organized. Look at, things are sideways. That's me, half, half, half witted and sideways. <laughs> Our apple corer is even in here. Anyways, these little containers that have the twist. See, I'm afraid to even move anything. It's been a busy summer, okay? Busy, busy summer. So the ones that look like this. So that way when you, see, this is my daughter's snack box. That way when you put your stuff in it, you put, you can get these and then you twist it and watch. Boom, that is airtight, that is airtight. So that way when you get things like iced tea mixes or, or crackers that need to go up, it, up in here, you can seal things off better. It's about a safe food storage because you can go out and buy a bunch of food and you can have it go bad. And that's a huge disaster, whether it be the food going bad being the disaster or have a disaster and have your food go bad. So protecting your food is more than just protecting your food with certain things you can protect it with. You have to protect your food from the elements. Um, mice, mice can get in your home. We actually had one this year after four years. Four years we went not having one until we did again. So um, that's another thing, pick up maybe some mice traps because if 
things go the way they do. And a lot of people think that they are, but I think we're a ways, a ways from that still. But still, pick up your mice traps, um, your things for critters to trap things because if you can't find them at the store, then you're SOL. So I actually um, have a stack that my daughter just put in our truck on Sunday, just in case he comes back, <laughs> in case another one comes back in. So now we're prepared. So that's another thing too, if you can help somebody um, prepare better, you know, I mean, I'm not ashamed to say that my daughter had those and we didn't. It's fine, it's fine. I use soap, so I'm sure that thing's around here somewhere, rest in peace. Um, but we don't smell it, so that's good. But he was coming from underneath the house, so that's probably where he went back to. Um, yeah, so I'm sure I'm rambling at this time. So I'm gonna get off here and go get some stuff done while my mind's kind of in prep mode. Today, I'm walking around taking inventory of everything that I'm making a list. And I'm taking inventory of things I need to do. Like today, I had to do all that running around. And then I come home, started some laundry, which I need to put in the dryer. And I need to finish this list of things to do around and outside this house. So inside and outside to prepare for fall and winter. Because while we all want to soak up and enjoy the summer, which I'm still going to do, our family is still going to be doing that, the in-between, we need to be preparing for winter. Now, when we first start put, started putting things back, it was for hard times, sicknesses, job loss, you know, things that life throws you. But it mainly those things and for winter. So we're not gonna stop doing that. But being the world is what it is today, I just kinda wanted to get on here. Around August is when we all up here start getting a little frantic with, oh crap, fall's coming and we need to do this and we need to do that and we gotta get this ready and that ready and gut things out. And a lot of us don't do a lot in our homes over the summer because we want to be outside because we're inside so long yeah so all right well enough rambling you guys know what you need to do shouldn't be any um we all have to remind each other you know did you check the batteries and the the smokes detectors and the carbon dioxide detector or monoxide detectors did you clean out the vents to your dryer? Did you buy your new air filters? Do you have air filters put back for your furnace? Um, did you do a chimney sweep on your wood stove? Did you buy new rope? Okay, there's a reminder. Uh, there's rope on the wood stove and if yours is looking fun funky, it needs to be replaced. This is black because the last fire we had, you know, is what it is so but your wood stove should never look like that ever so yeah um fire bricks also do you have any fire bricks cracked so make sure you get your fire bricks don't forget those so the corded rope for your door gasket um don't forget the graphite lube it's a graphite um uh, powder for your, sorry about the noise. We have these pins. Our wood stove is very old and one of these was sticking up. So when you do this, it shouldn't make a bunch of creaky noises. It should sound nice and smooth. That right there, the squeak that you heard, you can put a little of that graphite lube in there too. Don't ever put oil on your wood stove. See how quiet that is? because we put the graphite on there. So that's how you loop. Don't ever oil anything on or outside of a wood stove. So 
make sure you check your pipes. Um, don't forget to clean and dust around the whole thing. Summer happens, I've got everything around here because I just came home from the store, so I've got bags to go out back out to the truck. Um, that all needs to be vacuumed, dusted. The whole thing needs to be cleaned because of safety. So, and I'll even be doing the ceiling. <laughs> and then your first fire, don't forget to get that really, really hot burn, that good, real hot burn, you know, um, not only for the creoso inside the wood stove, like what we have on our doors right now, as long as you swept your fireplace, you think you might be good. But no, you've been all summer. You need to get everything and anything that could be in that pipe up and out and burn it. So know your, know your ramp. Um, you can always go by like five, 550, but I usually like to do a 450, four, yeah, about 450 is where I'm comfortable. Um, but at least ramp it up that high for at least a little while and then taper it down. Um, don't forget to things ramp even after you taper them down. So if you get around 400, you know your wood stove is going to ramp another 30, 50 degrees. Make sure you start crank, cranking it down. If you don't have never done a wood stove and it's gonna be your first time this year, don't worry if it chugs. But if you ramp a fire and shut it down too soon, you will get a chug on your wood stove. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's scary the first time. Just open your dampers up and wait till it stops. And then next time, make sure that you do a slower um, turn down of your stove. All right. So anyways, that's just a couple of little things that I've been thinking about that I thought that while I'm thinking about them and going a little Looney Tunes, I thought I'd maybe get on here and make y'all Looney Tune too. But just like I'm going to tell myself, stop stressing, calm down, enjoy the rest of your summer, but take one thing or two things a day depending on how much stuff you have, put it on a list and get it done. Okay, even if it's 15 minutes to an hour, just take a little bit of time and get some stuff done. So um, right now I'm taking rainy, crappy days doing it. So, all right. I love you guys. God bless and have a good day.